And hello, world. I'm back Ho- in the house. Hollywood. Now, see, dude, I'm echoing. I don't know. This. I just got to find some time to get this thing straight down. The blog talk's killing me. Yeah, that's all right, dude. Now nah, let's just go. We'll just wing it for this night. Let's bring in the uh, trifecta, the, the third part of the uh, party. I really wish I could play a guitar like that. You can't. It'd be awesome. It'd be all. You know, no, not at all. I, mean, I could probably attempt it, but it wouldn't sound anything like that. You could probably break one. Yeah, I'd be better off just getting it and smashing it over something. <laughs> well, Kyle, mate. Did you uh guys go racing where this weekend? No, nah, we uh we uh left the OMG car at the shop. Uh we was gonna take my dad's we took my dad's car to Winchester Speedway Thursday down here in Tennessee and uh practice that open practice. We took it and running around a few times and uh he he let me drive it a time or two, which probably was a mistake, but I didn't tear anything up and then we uh we started to go racing over there Saturday and then it was raining all around and so we just kinda stayed at home and and uh, they said they ended up racing. They only had like five or six cars, so we probably should have went, but oh well. Brian Gray, did anything interesting happen where you were at this weekend? Well, there was lots of interesting stuff going on, but uh, a lot of it's being talked about on 4M already. You know, we had finally got opening night in up at Mowler Raceway Park, and we had uh, Chad Stapleton end up winning the uh, the big feature up there that night. They did get in the rate. They did get in the racing down at Florence, which I heard was a kind of a crash fest. But uh, that we'll save that for another day. But I think the interesting topic is, uh, you know, Chad's interview on the DRC. If 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 somebody out there is listening and not familiar, um, the big the big to do this this Monday is um, some choice words and some choice um, extracurricular activities that Chad Stibbon may have insinuated to everybody. How to live their life um, has caused a ruckus. <laughs> um, the, there's words like morality and a uh, role model being thrown around. So we'll bring, hopefully, Chad a call here in a few minutes. We'll have Chad on. I'll be bringing us uh, updates from the Lucas Oil Tour. I was in Jackson, Mississippi over the weekend. Continued uh, on westward to Texas, Lone Star Speedway. And I'm going to, Don O'Neill at 6.30, 7.30 uh, for you uh, northerners in the future. And at 7.45, 6.45 my time, Mr. Jared Landers, winner at Lone Star. That's a show, boys. <clears throat> Dude, we already got uh, people commenting in, in the chat room, Web. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, here we go. You want me to, you want me to <laughs> repeat? Um, uh, let me do this first. Uh, the uh, the creators of In the Dirt neither uh, uh, support, confirm, deny, uh, encourage anything you may hear from our guests. No, dude, I'm going to save this because this line is best. Uh, you know, it's best uh, said by uh, our our guest here in a few. So we'll just give that to him. It's a uh, hmm. interesting. Co- Topic of conversation when you start talking about people in public's eye being role models, uh, I think it's absolutely and utterly irresponsible for a parent to let anybody but themselves be a role model. That's just me. That's just me, guys. Uh, so with, with these these arguments, I, I, that I'm you're right. With, you're right to a point. I mean, you. I mean, if we had a repeat of everybody's parents, I mean, imagine what kind of world we would have, Webb. Uh, but think about by, it. By no, by no, uh, by no coincidence that I have my little girl bring the show on. I feel like I'm her role model. Um, you're you're leading by example, then. Uh, yes, to an extent, I am. Now, there's things that uh, you know that. You know, I, I might drink too many Coors Lights on, on on occasion. Hey, you're digging that hole, Whip. I don't wish that on my daughter. You're digging it. No, 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 I'm not digging anything. Yeah, you put the shovel in the ground. No, I, I've dug the hole, and here's the deal. Parents are the responsible for what their children turn out to be. Not Chad Stapleton. 
Not true. True. Not, I, not I agree Charles with you. Barkley. Not Tony Stewart or any other stick and ball guy or any anything else. Um, now, it doesn't mean that that people in the public shouldn't have a they have a certain responsibility. I mean, you talked about that earlier to uh, not go crazy. But we'll get into that. I think I want to be like Charles Buckley, though. What's that? <laughs> I've already got him, already got him okay. there. I was going to say, if you just need to grow a few more inches, and you're a white Charles Barkley. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah, I wasn't an old basketball star, though. That was a whatever, you know. I just want to be famous, I think. Kyle you just want to be famous. Kyle May, you're yeah. already famous to me. Kyle the most famous. Yeah, I appreciate it. Dude, you're famous on In the Dirt. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm probably one of the uh, one of the top three guys on In the Dirt. I think. <laughs> hey, that's good. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Well, considering we, there's three, <laughs> we have slowed down. Slow down. What do we do? I don't know. Somebody's telling you to preach it, Webb. Oh yeah, I see that. I see that now. Yeah, by is by the way, is it against the law for uh I shouldn't say against the law. Is it against the is it against po- uh policy of in the dirt for us to uh be uh, having a drink while we're on the air? Um not necessarily. We just won't talk about it. Okay. Well, I just want to clear that up and <laughs> make sure, you know, just in case if I ever did want to partake. You know. I read I read the post you're talking about. Um, the only part of that post that I cared about is when they said in the dirt. That's hilarious to me. That uh, we like you get all the you get all the crap. And 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 at least they didn't say anything. I mean, I you do what you want to, brother. <laughs> I'm because, gonna try. I'm gonna try something. All right. You, you know this thing is this thing is. Uh, this thing's pretty fun, this little switchboard. But I keep getting I keep getting my uh, I should say I keep getting my head away from it. I can't quite uh, grasp what I'm supposed to be doing here while I, I'm multitasking. What's other what other task you trying to tackle? I I'm gonna try to like dial some phone numbers in here and then see if we can call some people. Okay. You know. It we got all this technology. And none of us know how to use it. So. I know. I feel so bad that, I, and time is uh, such a premium now with the season underway. Oh, look Uh-oh. at that! It's ringing. That works. Who? Who and, we got? And then it gives us this option. Guess what? Hello. 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 Hey, that's supposed Hello. to be Chad. Is Chad available? Um, this is his daughter's phone. Do you want me to give him your phone number or his phone number? Don't yep. give it over the air. <laughs> <laughs> so we got what do you think about that? <laughs> that's pretty cool. Except we don't need to call the daughter. Oh, that's the wrong number. Yeah, that's what she said. Right. So here, Live. let's try this one again. I'm gonna try another one. Live internet radio. It's really rush. Now, if that doesn't get his attention, something has to. <laughs> that would uh, that'd be a complete disaster, I believe, if we did put his uh, phone number out over the that live would, air. That would probably uh, uh, if we don't ruin us, that will. <laughs> Please enjoy this Verizon ringback. And, and the funny thing is, is, oh, ringback home. Let's chat. Chad Stapleton, welcome to In the Dirt. How are you, sir? All right. How you doing? Hey, you ain't never going to guess how we got your number. <laughs> how in the hell did you get my number? Huh? Well, how did somehow, you get my number? Some somebody sent me this phone number. Said this is Chad Stapleton's phone number. Are we I on the radio know. now, or yeah, you're we're on live. the radio we're, right we're, now. We're oh we're hell, you caught me. <laughs> got you. I was in the bathroom. I, take care of business. 
<laughs> Everything come out all right? I got to go on. Everything came out. You know, that, you know I've been texting your daughter. You've been texting my daughter? Oh, that yeah, sounds bad. Yeah, and I thought that it was you, but then she she texted me back. She said, this is his daughter, <laughs> and, and this is his phone number, and she gave me this number. Uh-oh. So she called me, didn't she? She called you. <laughs> well, Mr. Stapleton, uh, let's get down to uh, the... Uh, the business at hand here, other business than what you were doing earlier. But congratulations on an early season win. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate it. The interesting part of the weekend is when you is not when you said what well, we'll get to in a minute, but what you said about you learned more in three days racing with the uh, guys down in East Bay. Give me more on that subject of what you guys you actually, your program actually picked up from racing with the. Uh, Lucas guys, and, 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 and what's considered the upper echelon? Well, you know, you just go race with them Lucas guys, the Don O'Neills, the Scott Bloomquist, the Jimmy Owens, Ray Cook, uh, Jared Landers, Jonathan Davenport. Uh, you race with all them guys, man, and it's uh, it's a whole different ballpark. I mean, Scott James and people like that, they're, them guys are out for blood when you race for them, and uh, you just learn uh, learn to have a little more respect for the other drivers. Uh and it's uh it's just uh just the experience you gain with them guys that uh more than anything it picks your game up and it gets you a little used to going faster and being used to track speeds and uh you know we had problems qualifying down there and once we got on the track with them we was right there with them uh, because it gave me a little bit of an edge to where to hit my marks and you know where to let out of the gas and get back in the gas and uh, so it was just a big learning experience and and running door to door with them guys you just uh. You learn a lot of things. You learn a lot of patience, and I think in the past it's always been my problem with patience. And uh, I learned a lot of patience down there. Now going back to the events, there, what um, what was it was keeping you guys out of the events leading you know leading up to the ones you made? Well, it didn't help a whole lot. Uh, considering the first night I tore the wall down qualifying and decided to climb the wall and you know give uh, would react a little bit of sponsorship there, I guess. Yeah, by the way, I got to thank you so much for that, Chad, because I forwarded that picture to Tony Woodward, and you know what he done? He probably sent you a rag, Brian. He absolutely did, dude, and I needed that. I couldn't afford to get one, and I got one on the way. <laughs> he said that they laughed their ass off. Well, you owe me a tire then. Okay, I'll hook you up. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, just the first night when, you know, the, the show rose so quick down there. Uh, one of the biggest things, we were shorthanded, we... You know, my normal crew chief, Gator, uh, his father just passed away, and uh, he was sick like Gator, you know, while we went to Florida. So uh, he had to spend, you know, valuable time with his dad, and he got to do that. And unfortunately, he lost him last week, so lost him last Thursday. Uh, but, you know, that that was a big deal with us, and Kyle done all he could, and, and Kyle got, got us going in the right direction. But, you know, we was just behind the eight ball all week. We, uh... The night we hit the wall qualifying, we didn't have time to check our shocks. But all we had time was change our spindle. And our, come to find out Tuesday night, we didn't even check the shocks again. And come to find out Wednesday morning, we're already behind the eight ball. And we've got two busted right side shocks, and we couldn't figure out why the car wouldn't stay up. Well, Thursday, we get the two right side fixed. And us dumbasses didn't realize that maybe we should check our fifth coil shock. <laughs> well, but we checked the fifth coil shock Thursday after the races, and it's busted. So we we was just uh, a lot of bonehead moves and, and just really didn't have time and uh, and uh, you know things I think we had you know had to, all of our help there everything would have been checked but uh, one guy can only do so much so that that kind of hurt us and and they're qualifying man you you got to be on top of your game and you got to turn that good lap. Now did you get to experience the track changing with the tides? Did the track change uh, as much as it's been rumored to? Yeah, it's amazing how the how the track changes. In my eyes, Webb, the the hardest track I've ever raced on is El, is uh, East Bay. I mean, it's so fast. Everything happens so quick. Uh, you know, when we went out Friday night, I, I told Kyle and the guys, I said, you know what? Like I've told you before, I've only been doing this stuff for four years. Uh, you know, hell, Brian, you've been around this stuff what your whole life, pretty much. Well, I've been I've been around racing my whole life, but. Right, and you know, it's something I've just, you know, four or five years I've picked on and just started doing. I mean, uh, I wasn't a big fan of racing. I thought it was, uh, I thought NASCAR was a bunch of redneck hillbillies trying to live a Dukes of Hazzard fantasy. But, uh, and then you found out dirt late model racing was. 
And then I found Dirt Lake model, and it, it's a. Uh, and I just told him when I went out, I was like, "Look, you know, if we get laughed, I'm pulling in." And uh, hell, there was a couple wrecks, and this, that, and the other. And you know, one night I looked up, and we was running eight. Uh, and I thought, well, hell, you know, this this is pretty cool. And and not one time was we close to getting laughed, and uh, that was a big deal. And you know, and just running a 50 lap show and a 60 lap show, uh, the experience was. I mean, it's. And I mean that when I say I learned more in two nights at East Bay than I have my whole time I've raced, that's the gospel, that's the truth. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's shown in the past. You know, we've struggled at Florence in the past real, real bad. I mean, I think the best I ever had there is like a 12th place finish. Then we was pretty darn good Saturday night. Uh, it sucks what happened to McGuire. Our right front shot broke. Uh, and I collected Josh up in it, man, and I would... I would rather hit my grandma than Josh McGuire. That poor feller has so much bad luck. And, and I, I just went down and talked to him, you know, after the heat race because him and Chamberlain got into one another. And I told him, I said, hell, Josh, you fall in the field of titties, come out sucking on your thumb. That's where your luck goes. And, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and he, uh, I mean, he just, uh, I feel for the guy, man. And, I, you know, actually after uh, after the race and, you know, after the night was, you know, I went down and told him, I said, look, dude, that's the least I can do is buy you a new upper uh, he said, damn, it's taped him as my last upper, you know, just give me crap. And so I went ahead and Master Bill sent him a new upper today, so that's the least I could do for the guy. But uh, we had a good run at Muller Friday night. Uh, Phil Cars, you know, Wayne Chen and Dwayne Chamberlain and Barry Dalton and John Whitney and Mikey Myers and, uh, you know, of course, Brian wasn't there. We probably wouldn't have won if Brian would have been there. <laughs> there ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> At least you recognize We're getting- We'll see that, but I don't know. You never know. He, might he, be he wouldn't have won because he would have made the effort to run into me at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no, he that's, have, that's then he wouldn't have finished the race. Well, that's the deal, man. Everybody, you know, the Tim Carpenter guy, I mean, the, you know, I, I think the guy's kind of on a tight budget in racing, and uh, and, I, and I feel for him. And, you know, he came up and talked to me and said he went to McDowell School this, you know, over the winter and that it really helped him out. And, you know, hell, we all got to start somewhere. So I think we're sure talking to a different Chad Stapleton web. This whole Lucas thing has changed his whole outlook. Now, I well, understand I mean, about getting I laps still got... and have the experience, but, man, you sound like you went to a religious church or something and changed <laughs> well, your whole life. I'm getting ten tons of shit for the smoking crack and drinking well, jack. Well, I mean, hell, yeah. I weigh 250 pounds. I, I'm probably the biggest crackhead you ever seen. Yeah. Uh, well, let's 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 let's, uh, let's do this in order. Um, you, <laughs> Chad, you're an alumni of In the Dirt. You've been on a couple times. To actually, hosted the show. Uh, right. Brian was serving his one game suspension. Yeah. Got and, me kicked right. off. Yeah. And you. They you said told Brian me. was hanging out at Pickle Park. <laughs> oh. Pickle Park. <laughs> oh. I gotta give Brian some shit. Go ahead, yeah, anyways. That's Sorry. fine. That's fine. So anyway, um, the, one of my favorite stories uh, is how you you give T-shirts to the kids when they come by. If a teacher, if a kid comes up to the, the the truck, they almost always get a T-shirt from you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. I mean, man, what what uh, what kills me? Let's face it. Uh, a lot of people, not everyone. I'm not trying to uh, justify right or wrong or how you live or the way you live, but a lot of people that come to the racetrack. Uh, you know that their their parents spend all the money they got to get you into the track and buy you a hot dog and some popcorn or whatever it may be and uh yeah, not that I'm profiling by any means, but I mean you can kind of judge whether whether a kid's parents can afford it or not and uh gosh damn it if if a kid wants a t shirt and I have to listen to him tell you know his mom told him, no, I can't get you one we don't have the money, I'm not gonna deal with that uh yeah. i've got I've been pretty fortunate and uh some some things has went my way, and uh, if that fifteen dollars is going to break me, then I I don't need to be there. And and that's just that's just um, uh, a courtesy. That's just something you do because you know, hell, if I was a kid and wanted a t-shirt, I would hope the driver would have given me one when I was a kid. So I understand that now. So your honor, I like to present, I like to exhibit what exists exhibit A. Ain't no damn crackhead anywhere giving away nothing. Right, right. <laughs> but that they might be up on. in the city trying to get them a fix. Yeah, so let's move on They're to the... breaking uh, into your neighbor's house, stealing their plumbing. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Take their wire and their copper and all that. Yeah. We, we yeah, live got, in Edinburgh, but we can't afford copper. We got plastic. Yeah. <laughs> so That's let's probably move. the safest way to roll right now. No copper. 
no electric, no water, nothing. Just a shack with a wood door or something. I don't hell, hell I don't Brian, know. you know how it goes. That's what we got to do to race. That that's it. That's what I was just talking to my buddy Josh Edwards about today. I said I'm stuck living up on this hill because I got race cars in the garage. That's that's right, man. You know, I've always said though that uh, racing is a hobby to me, and if uh, if something happens financially, um, the race cars are the first things to go. I've got a daughter myself. I got to take care of, so you got to take care of what's right, what you know first. So. Yeah. So let's move on to the to the perceived uh, verbal infraction that was made on um, the DRC post race interview. Matt Muriel was the uh, uh, interview. Er. Now, Webb, first of all, you got to clear up that this was something done on video. This was probably video. done back in the trailer, not in front of a That's bunch right. of people. This was That's done, right. you know, on video somewhere. This wasn't a public display. No. So, no, in, that, right. in that standpoint, standpoint I'm going to stand here behind Chad because I keep running, and this choker chain on my neck keeps jerking me back down and keeping me from saying anything. <laughs> so we, we, you know, we was in the trailer, man. It was all in good fun. Uh, First off, I don't condone smoking crack. I don't even like Jack Daniels. I drink Crown and cold beer. So, yeah, kids, you can do that when you turn 21, but don't do it until you're 21. Uh, you know, it, it's just a rhyme. I'm not a very educated person, and it don't take a genius to put smoke crack and drink Jack together. So uh, it was just kind of something that comes out. I, I say it to everyone, you know, uh, Shaper racing old Alan Bradley. The first time I ever met him, I told him, "Hey, what's?" He said, "How you doing, Mr. Stepan?" So I smoked a crack, drinking Jack, and he laughs. You know, it's a it's an icebreaker to people because it catches them off guard. And they're like, "Wow, I, I can't believe this guy just said that." It, uh, yeah, I get so, that a lot let me get, too. Let me get this straight, Chad. Let me. I just want to make sure that uh, that I've got this straight. You're not handing out minis and bags of crack. No, no, no. Not yet. I mean, we don't have any baggies in the truck. Okay, so th just make sure that that's the that the, that we're not. Because I'm gonna have to come see you. I don't need the crack, but I'll take the minis. <laughs> right. I mean, now, it's, it's just you know, it's it's really nonsense that people want to take uh, take what I said and twist it all around and say it's not good for the sport, it's not good for this, it's not good for that. I'm the type of person, yeah, if you see me with the kids at a racetrack, the first thing out of my damn mouth at a racetrack with their kid is, how you doing, buddy? Give him high five, and you make a good grade in school. You're being good to your mom and dad. You're doing this. You're doing that. Uh, of course, I don't look at a kid and say, hey, buddy, you smoking crack? <laughs> uh, Have you got any? 90 of, well, you know, 90% of your kids don't even know what crack is. So, uh, you know, and then you get people on the Internet giving me this stuff, and, uh, it's all bullshit. If you don't like it, don't watch it. My my little girl asked me what crack was. I said it's a place for a plumber to put his pencil. Well, yeah. I mean, it's you know, for all they know, I, I you know, I could be smoking butt crack. You know what I mean? They just there's all kinds. There's cracks in the concrete. There's cracks in asphalt. So uh, I drink Jack and I smoke the crack after I fall in, and I don't know. Do you, <laughs> well, do you, would you uh, mind sharing some of the uh, outcry? that you've heard or, or, or received? Well, just people saying that, you know, that's not a role model and that's not this and that's not that. And yeah, but yet Kobe Bryant's a role model when he's on TV sleeping with 15 different whores out in California or whatever they do. Or, uh, you know, one guy on the Internet that was giving me grief and like somebody went back in the previous post and was talking about uh, adult things going on on the highway. But, yet yeah, he's complaining about me saying smoking crack and drinking jack. Uh, I mean, and then you get one one hero on there that uh, there's nothing I hate worse uh, is a growing person with a kindergarten education, and that's what 90% of them people in 4M have. They're growing people with a kindergarten education. They don't have nothing better to do with their time but to try and run people on the ground. All these people in 4M, if they think they can get on a racetrack and come to Moeller and beat me, I'll put them in my other car, and I'm going to spank their ass for them. Excellent. Wait. Here, let's let's take a let's take a second though and really think about it for a second. Now, you, everybody, you know, I've always been told everybody cuts their own deal. I believe that um, it does take a you know you do have to have some luck in life to to succeed at certain things. 
but at the end of the day, it's, you're the one that's making the decisions that either get you there or get you nowhere, right? Right, right. So, it, and and you've been, I guess, just let me clear clear this up. Are, are you? Do you have intentions of uh, being like full time on the Lucas tour? I mean, is that a goal? Yep, that's a goal, man. To be honest with you, I, I, I was real, real. I uh, talked to Richie Lewis a little bit this past earlier in the week. I was real close to doing it. Uh, to be real honest with you, I, I don't think I'm quite ready for it. Uh, believe it or not, I, I think Richie and James Essex and all them guys welcome me. I mean, I'm a change. I'm somewhat of a change to the sport. I'm a little outspoken. I like to have fun, uh, but it's all in good fun. It's not that I'm trying to start up with anybody or be assholes. But uh, you know, the, the Lucas deal. Uh, the Lucas deal is probably something I am going to do. It, it'll be Lucas the World Outlaws. Uh, me and Bub McCool's pretty good buddies, so uh, at the end of the year, Bub and I sit down and see what uh, see what we got coming up, and and if he wants to run Lucas, I may run Lucas with him, or if he runs World Outlaws, I may run that with him. Uh, and I think that's a great that's that's a, a great place to go, and, and you know just just to be able to race with guys like that, and and not only race with you know the top guys in the country, but the amount of exposure. What that does is it puts you to puts you in another classification as a driver. At that point, well, it just at that man, point, it, you're going it's, back. Is this Brian I'm got, talking to? Yeah, yeah, it's Brian. Brett, Brian, you know what it's like, man. When we go out there and we run some guys, I mean, brother, they're in a whole different league. And you oh, know, yeah, a guy on four M, a guy four M, giving me shit, saying, "Ah, oh, he's excited because he made his Lucas race." Well, hell yeah, I'm excited. You know what I mean? I, I, to be honest Dude, with would you, be, brother, I'd be ecstatic. Saturday man. night. Saturday night at East Bay, and I don't, I'm a man, I don't care to say it, but Saturday night when I came across some checkered flags at East Bay, I've been getting cold chills now talking about it in the heat race. And made it in. We started eighth in the heat, and I got a little fortune. There's a little pile of people. But you know what? I held off Errol Pierce, Pearson, Austin Hubbard. I held off a bunch of good cards. When I came across that checkered flag, brother, I had tears coming down my eye, and that's a winner. That's being a winner in life, and that's what people don't understand. And to any kid listening, I don't care. I, 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 I'm an adult. I've done things in my life that uh, that gives you a high besides a natural high, but there's no better feeling in the world than being a winner, whether it's you're a winner on the basketball court, you're a winner in life, you're whatever you may be, being a winner is the best high you'll ever have. So there's no reason to ever to have to try to do drugs because if you're a winner, you'll never feel better in your life. No, there's no doubt about that. I, I believe that. But back to the point I was making is that at some point in time, what you as you know, if you're going to go on tour and you're going to race at that level, and, and let's not get anybody wrong, that right there is the upper echelon of what we do. If you can go out and make features in Lucas or World of Outlaws, you you are making a statement regardless. And, and I applaud you for making that. And I was very very happy that you made that race. Um, but at the end of the day. You're going to have to find sponsors that are going to have to, you know, afford you to be able to run all those nights, and it's very important at, at that point not only to uh, keep those sponsors happy because they expect certain things out of you. Right. Because right. It, it, at, at that point, it turns into a business, and guys that think that it, that it doesn't, they're, I mean, they've just got to be out of your mind. That that is a business to those guys. You right. Know, and, they're, um, and, and you have to you you have to. Make sure that you're doing the best that you can do to keep those sponsors happy. And what does, you know, if you're going to, and I've got nothing against Jody and them, but at the same time, if you're going to be at that level at some point, do you do you keep pushing to, to, to get on that level and just be what, who you are and do what you do? Or do you change you know certain things to, uh, you know, not expose yourself to this kind of criticism? I'll never change who I am as a person. I am who I am. There's there's no in between with me. You either like me or you hate me. Uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the comments, you know, the you know the jack and crack. Yeah, of course. I if I was on with this wall, I would know I couldn't say that. Uh, you know, with Alan Bradley with with Schaefer Racing Oil, he's been great to me. I appreciate everything he's done. Uh, and you know, and yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Alan actually texted me earlier and asked me if I could clear my voice message just so he could leave me one. So I don't know if he wants to rip my hind end or what he wants to do. But uh, I, I do apologize for the comment. But I'm not going to change, Brian, who I am for anybody. And I don't care if you're the biggest bum in town or you're the mayor of the town. If you're my friend, 
I judge no one. I don't care what you are, how you are, and how you got there. It don't matter to me. It matters to me what you are as a person. And, and just for the record, Chad, at the end of the day, that's just entertainment to me. I mean, at the same time, we are racers, but at some point, you know, you, you are an entertainer at that level. Well, right. You get on camera and just act goofy. That's just, you know, you're just doing your thing and having fun. I, I get that. and But I think some people take that stuff beyond what it actually is, is what, right. we're, is what we're seeing. Well, you know, and it's, it, 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 if I there and told you it didn't bug me a little bit, all the four-end stuff, uh, I'd be lying to you. Uh, but, it, but you know, like I said, I apologize if people took it out of context, and yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said it, but uh, it is what it is. It's, it's done. It's over with. I can't change it. Um, you know, I have a lot of people, you know, sponsors. You know, I started a business, Brian, just a separate business to try and keep my racing going to fund my racing. Actually, you know, right now, I'm five and a half hours away from home trying to make money to keep my racing going. But I was gone all weekend away from, you know, my family. And now I'm back here, you know, I'm away from my daughter again. So uh, I'm doing what it takes to try and get to that level. Sponsors do help me. It is great having their help, you know, with Motor State and All Star and Hoosier and Ron Wick at VP Racing Products and Rocket Chassis and Jay Dickens. You know, Jay Dickens has done the world for me. Uh, you know, uh, Sweet Racks, I mean, just, you know, K&L Machining, uh, Jones Core, all these people, they help me. But, you know, 80% of this comes from me. It don't come from sponsorships. But but whatever, you know how it is, whatever help you do get in racing, it's greatly appreciated. Oh, definitely. Well, and, Chad, and you have to have that. Yeah. Well, you're you're Chad, right. Chad, I uh, appreciate you uh, taking time out of your evening to talk with us Uh you know, you're always welcome here. I wanted you to have a voice in all this and uh, put it out there that uh, it was just Chad being Chad. It's not anything. And, and listen, you got your daughter to raise, not everybody else's. Right. So I appreciate you coming on tonight, speaking with us about the, the topic. Um, and I wish well, you luck. Let me tell you something, thing. Web. Go ahead. If, if 90% of these people that was around their mouth would take the time to come over and talk to me, I guarantee at the end of the night we'd be hanging out the holler, drinking a cold beverage, and shooting the crap and having a good time. The biggest thing is I want to thank all my sponsors. If I forgot any of them, you know who you are. I appreciate all the help they do. I appreciate all the racers coming to the track on Friday nights and uh, being, you know, being able to have cars there for a show for the fans to see. And like I said, I'm ending it on this note. You guys have a good night. Uh, don't smoke crack. Don't drink Jack. Don't be a fool. Be cool. Stay in school. Peace, love, and happiness. Later. There we go. What a turnaround. Total chaos. We'll be right back here on In the Dirt. Welcome back in, race fans, to In the Dirt. Mr. Chad Stable to come on to to, uh, to uh, talk about his evening there at Moeller and the post-race interview comments he made. He cleared up the air. Right now, I'd like to welcome to the uh, program. Mr. Don O'Neill. Don, how are you, sir? Hi, thanks, Will. Thanks for having me. So, uh, you uh, are an alumni of the show, been on with us a couple a uh, couple weeks back, and uh, since then you've gone on to a couple more victories. Tell us about Jackson, Mississippi on Friday. Hell, yeah, well, we just, no one feels like the weekend before, you know, Jimmy got out front and we chased him the whole race, and it's at the end to have to get her slide around him, you know, to get the win. Now, uh, like uh, it, it had been made out, a lot of the guys hadn't been there. I think they said that Steve Francis may have been one of the only guys that had actually been there uh, from the old Have a Tampa days. Um, what were your What were your impressions of Jackson Motor Speedway? Yeah, I mean, actually, I mean, it was you know, it's sort of a dirty racetrack. It never really cleaned off much until we're late in the feature, and it was you know, the bottom was a preferred line all night long, really. And it was, it was, and and like you said, Owens Owens took off. Um, and then he kind of just left the door open for you, um, and you you got through there. Um, and there was a little bit of contact, but that was nothing more than a racing thing, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, I mean, especially when you're racing on the hub like that, you know, someone just slides enough to give you enough room to you know get in there. That's that's part of it there. So, looking forward, you guys obviously are going to go up to Jamaica. Um, what do you guys got for him? 
<laughs> I don't know. I, thought, I really thought we had a good shot at it Saturday night, you know, and I went, went in the first quarter and about spun out, nobody's fault but my own, and got way back to the back and dug her way back up, you know, to like seven or something and broke an axle a couple couple laps ago on the end of her night there. But I just never know what, what you don't get in a race night, but just go prepared and give 100%, and that's all you can do. So you're telling me they race in Jamaica Web? Well, this is a uh, Virginia. Yeah. What did you say now? I'm sorry. Brian but Gray I, was asking about Jamaica, and I told no, Brian Gray, this was not the island of Jamaica. <laughs> because Webb said you guys were going to Jamaica, and I was like, what? What's Jamaica? I didn't know they even had racetracks over there. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be a nice vacation, wouldn't it? You're not kidding. <laughs> I don't know how much of a vacation it would be, but you know, you'd have to really keep an eye on your parts and stuff. Now, <laughs> I'd say you would. Now, speaking of uh, island paradises with a dirt track, you know there's a dirt track in Hawaii. No, I had no idea. I, the wife and I went over a few years ago, and I found it on a website, and I said, I got plans for a Saturday night. And she said, what? And I said, we're going to the dirt track. She said, I did not come to paradise to go to a dirt track. I bet she was really proud of you. you no, you. she wasn't. No, no, no. So that, that, like that would ruin my to- whole trip. Lucas Oil needs to schedule a race in Hawaii, then. <laughs> you just made Richie Lewis turn in his bed, I think. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, 2011 was just a stellar year, and, and we're so early into this year. You guys have, have reeled off some victories. I mean, is this uh, residual from last year, or is it just uh, you and Tater and the guys are just on it? Well, it's just, I mean, last year I think we showed, you know, we can win some of these races and just the effort they put towards it. And it's just it's just showed up, you know, last season. And I feel like, you know, as long as we keep doing the same thing we're doing, we can still, we can still win some races. Well, tell us a little bit about the crew and uh, thank some of the guys that work hard on the race car and uh, we'll get you out of here. Yeah, of course, Tater Masters and, and Cody Mahoney and Randy Million, they're the main guys that work in it. And then a lot of the guys at the Master Built shop that builds the chassis, they pitch in and do stuff through the week, too. So it's a it's a whole team effort. Now, that, the the Cody fella, he uh, he races, he's a good racer in his own right, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He, I mean, he don't get a race very much, just except whenever we take a weekend off or I go drive the number one mooring car. That's the only time he races. And, and for no more than he races, he does a heck of a job. Well, all right, Don, we certainly appreciate you guys uh, sharing your evening with us for a few minutes. Um, you guys keep winning. We'll keep having you back on and uh, bragging about it. Okay, hey, work on that on that uh, Hawaiian race for me, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be sure to get Essex and Richie on that. Okay, see you guys. Mr. Don O'Neill, everybody. And then you we, just go quiet. I, I, I was waiting for you to say something. Well, I just said something. Oh, there you go. See, he something. didn't have but a few. He didn't have but a few minutes. But I, I do like that. Uh, I really like that um, Hawaii deal. The Hawaii, the Lucas Oil Hawaii 100, followed by the Lucas Oil Banquet at the Hawaiian Hilton, hosted. This is the this is the big deal right here. Hosted by web dealer Brian Gray. And Kyle May can be the trophy girl. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate I'll, let that. You, I'll let you keep your lumberjack beard. I, I, I have to have it. Lumberjack yeah. beard in Hawaii. Now, yeah. I've I seen where there were racetracks over there, but I didn't know that there was actually a dirt track in the middle of Hawaii. That's that's pretty interesting. But back to that uh, whole vacation deal, if I was to tell Tim, hey, we're going to Hawaii on vacation, and I took her to a dirt track, I'm telling you, she'd ship my butt back home right then. Brandy was not impressed. Not at all. No, 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 no. She was actually mad that I even looked for one. First she said this. She goes, what made you look for one? I go, I don't know. Kind of like racing. <laughs> do, do you get that too? Oh, yeah. Listen, it, I, it, listen. It, does, does she ever tell you, I think you're just too involved? You just That's all you ever think about? Now, um, if... If I was involved and um, I was not um, sort of making a living from it, then yes, <laughs> I would probably get told that. Do you, do you ever get that, Kyle? 
Yeah, like, uh, it was terrible when I first started racing. Like, we had, uh, my mama, uh, she would, like, get in the truck and leave on Saturday so we couldn't load the race car up. She would get so mad about us wanting to race every weekend. And I think it was partially because we were spending her money, too, me and Daddy. I think she didn't, <laughs> I think she didn't enjoy that all that much. Yeah, she didn't you, enjoy seeing all the money go go down to the racetrack yeah. and come back in a pile of wadded up metal. Now, Kyle, exactly. I know you're... I, I, Kyle, I know you're not married, and, and, and you're probably not close to being married. But um, if your mama was mad about spending her money, wait yeah, till you, wait till, yeah, <laughs> wait till the future Mrs. Kyle Lumberjack May has what she has to say. <laughs> yeah, that's hey, a whole other yeah. issue. That's a whole other set of issues that you're going to have to carry around with you. Just remember that. Yeah, I got you. And also, too, I wanted to uh, I wanted to um, point something out. In the Dirt host Kyle May, and I'm going to get the dates and everything um, squared away. But Mr. Kyle May will be um, attending uh, my daughter's school to read a, a racing book to her kindergarten class. It's going to be it's going to be wild, I think. Yeah. Have you been but, practicing your reading? I well, haven't. I just found out about it like an hour before the show started. Yeah. So I thought we're going to get nervous in front of a crowd. But, yeah, I went. I, I went in a couple of weeks ago and played guitar for him. They did the hokey pokey. So, why well, everybody want to bring in our next guest? Little like little me. word of little word of advice, Kyle. You know, have you ever had anybody tell you, you know, when you're doing public speaking that you just stand up there and you picture everybody in their underwear? <laughs> you're in a bird. It's gonna be it's gonna be awkward. That's what they tell if you're in a room of kindergartners, though. Good, that's what I was about to get to. Don't take that uh, advice in a room right. full of kindergartners. All right. Some let's people welcome, might take it the wrong way. Let's welcome to the program a uh, winner of the uh, Havoc over at Lone Star Speedway, Mr. Jared Landers. Mr. Landers, how are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. You, you stumbled into a uh, conversation <laughs> that was probably was a lot of, pretty damn weird. Yeah, I picked up back into one there. I was like, wonder what we got going on. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're we're going to get back to racing right now. That okay. was way off topic. I, I was I was going in a direction there, but it just didn't work out. No, it was bad. So <laughs> yeah, that was very distasteful. Jared, uh, coming off the um, uh, Rookie of the Year campaign and the Lucas uh, Oil Series, uh, you guys brought on a new teammate there at Clint Boyer and um, Jonathan Davenport, and you guys have seen some uh, some success. Talk about what the victory on Saturday at Lone Star meant to the program. Oh, it, it, was, it meant a lot. You know, it was our first focus, uh, you know, win for the year. And, you know, since we're all chasing the points, you know, it's just a, being this early in the year, you know, some momentum, you know, knowing that we can do it. It's better than at the end and have to, you know, struggle to get one. But I got the win out of the way, so now I get to go for a race. So I'm going to get some more. <laughs> now, you guys come out of the gate on Friday at Jackson, Mississippi, um, and set fast time, what were, what were the issues you guys had there on, on Friday night? Oh, of course. The, uh, after, well, we, we really didn't have any issues. I mean, we just, the track just changed, you know, and uh, I just, while well, I run fourth, uh, maybe could have run the second, third right there, but I just, I got to the wall there, you know, I raised Brian O'Neill there for a little bit, and I got up there, and I guess had a two got there and knocked his floor off, and then I got loose. Didn't hold my car on the bottom, so I ended up just, you know, taking a full place finish, which is way better than I expected in my place. So. And, well, now going into Saturday, it was just a, re- a repeat performance. You guys get out there, dominant, green flag all the way through the race. Tell me what you thought when that yellow come out. Well, I didn't know how many laps were left. Uh, I was thinking, I knew we ran a long time, but there was no boards. I didn't see the, the two to go that he held up there. You know, I don't know if it was either the caution or just came out or something. Uh, I wasn't real, what was what happened there. So, you know, we fired off there, and my little receiver, you pick up every now and then, the words are fixed, they probably said there's two to go. You know, I knew was, they went through the files. So I knew where it was in at least 10 to go. When I come around there and give me, Getting in there the first lap, like the front, and I guess lap 48, get under me and run me into the next corner, you know, kind of run me up the racetrack. 
uh, with one to go, two to go, I mean, you got to do that. I crossed them back over, and when we came back, you know, came across the line, it was a white flag, so I, I didn't realize that uh, I almost lost it that quick, you know. Now, I've got, a, I've got a web question, Web. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, and this is for Jared. This comes off of uh, off of the hit. Well, I'm not even going to say where it comes off of, but somebody wants to know if the nose on your chassis is longer this year. Is the nose longer this year? Oh, I don't yeah. know. Pretty much. <laughs> because somebody's wondering why it keeps getting into the back of people. They thought it might just be uh, no. a little bit longer. <laughs> no, come on. Now... That's yeah, a real yeah. question, Webb. I'm just asking the questions. I'm not I, knocking on Jared. I'm getting back to people's cars faster. I haven't judged the speed yet, you know. It, and, just, uh, it just makes it harder to judge, right? All, all I, yeah. All I got, you know, like I said, all I need to do is pick up my qualifying, so i got to get back to these guys. Half, half of them are just a little bit off pace, so I get in there, and I, I'm trying to go around these guys and they make a you know, they make a decision last minute and they might kick the car sideways and I've already figured out how to get to the corner better than these guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I ran cool. it right through them and I mean they're gonna have to hit the brakes or hit them and I finally uh, hit the I hit the brakes and spun out twice the last couple of weeks. And the last time I just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kick this guy. I'm just gonna go ahead and go. I'm gonna make them all around. So yeah, well, I mean, if you got... See, uh, there you go. That's an honest answer, Webb. Right. Somebody else would have said, oh, well, I didn't mean to get into him. Uh, you know, they're just having trouble. See, at least he's telling the truth. I don't Listen. go out there and think he's lying on purpose, by no means, but, I, I uh, you know, I guess you give a man a... I expect the same. Somebody did the same to me. I don't I, I understand. If you're going forward and somebody's holding you up and you make a couple efforts to get around them and it just costs you some more time... If you have to get into them, just deal with it. I, I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I'm, I not, wanna, I'm not I beating wanna. you up. I'm not beating you up, Jared. I, I get that. That's the that's the way it works sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you, you've got to give them a little touch here and there, and, and you you don't know what, you know, a lot of times people don't know what that guy was doing, you know, laps and laps before, 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 and it's like repeated over and over again. And you can't help it if he runs down in the corner and locks the brakes up. Jared, yeah. this is, Jared, you're speaking to Brian Gray. He's a uh, late model driver out of uh, Hamilton, Ohio. Right. He's my yeah. co-host. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you just get your deals going. I mean, it's, I get it. You know, this car's fast. It's hard to judge the corner speed in this thing anymore. I, that's what I told him to go on the week. I got to get my butt. I got to get qualified better. You get qualified better, you don't have to worry about running over nobody. That's you right. How? Jimmy and, and you the guys that are fast, you're not going to run over them in the center of the corner. You know, these guys, you can go race the fast guys. It's the guys that get off a little bit and, you know, that you got to worry about. So, how are uh, how are you and Davenport uh, working together there in the uh, Boyer Stable? Oh, if it wasn't for Jonathan, I mean, we wouldn't be where we're at. I mean, he's got good equipment. He, he, you know, he chose everything we've got now. Um, he's got... You know, all the knowledge he had, he's won races all with. So, you know, he quit Barry. Um, so he went on a roll, and he, I guess he won the first two races that were right here, you know, two ten thousand 10,000 to win races, and he's next to Clint. So he's got good momentum, and it sure helped me, knowing that I'm with a guy that knows, you know, that we're in a good car, and he knows what he's doing. So it's good to share information with him, and I think we'll have some more wins, you know, throughout the year. Now you you come fr- to, from the open wheel ranks uh, into the late models and uh, much was made about the uh, topless win. Um, that had to be one of the better video clips I've saw I saw that year. Tell us about that uh, uh, big big check you got there. Well, that, that was another one of those. You know, I got it, it kind of played in my favor. You know, because I, I was the next guy in line that had a tire that was good enough to go win the race. And I knew there was only one guy in front of me that had a tire. It was better than mine was Bub McCool. And he was pushing everybody. He, I, was, I was right behind him, so he moved everybody out of the way, you know, raced him. I passed every car with him, so I never had to work my tire over. And, you know, he had his flat, and then I was the guy in line that it was the newest tire, and the car was good, so I uh, I actually give it up with two to go because I, I slowed down to keep, you know, to keep the guy, just to keep him hurting the tire, you know, because, you know, it was a big tire game, so when I slowed down, the car pushed, and it, yeah, 
real piercing by me. And so I guess, I guess there's a five lock shoot out, and then I had to get them back through to go. So it, it really, yeah, it was turned, it, hand, it was handy to me because I was next down line, but yet I feel like I worked for it because I had to pass the guy back. You know, it was just, it was Earl. I mean, he's a good racer. He, he led the, same thing happened to him, the, you know, the week before. He got uh, 50,000 win at uh, Lawrence. He got passed on uh, just, I think it was the white flag lap. Well, with any race, you got to make all the laps, not just the last one. <laughs> yeah, and and you can, you know, you win one of those races, you definitely earned it. There's nothing handed to you. I agree agree with that. That's a that was an excellent feat, and you came out of nowhere, kind of, you know, in the dirt late model world, winning that race. Yeah, because I had sit, that was probably I only raced that car eleven times that year, you know, and I, I just you know tried to focus on a modified. I really didn't. I didn't care to race the late models, but just, you know, because I had a modified business going on. Um, after that day, I kind of just been around and tried to get to the maybe go run some more races. I didn't mind doing it, but I just wanted to do it with, you know, with a plan or somebody that wanted to pull, you know, good, pull through and stuff and give me everything I need to go out there and run all these things. And, and he did, but, just, you know, him doing that made me where I could be. I'm now. Now, now, Jared, I don't know if you remember, but uh, Brian and I were Brian and I were the uh, fools sitting in front of you guys at the uh, Lucas Oil Banquet. I think Brian's got something to ask you about. Yeah. Yeah. When are you gonna send me that uh, certificate for them Dyer's rods? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you are now. Yeah. I need those things, man. I really do. <laughs> well, help a brother out. I'll give you my address, and you just <laughs> just put it in the mail, or, right. or you can just or you can email me. Yeah, that help us a, out a bunch. We'll put uh, Landers Racing on it on the side of the car. Um, yeah. We'll promote the crap out of you. Yeah, I know, but I had a I turned it my modified guy because I had a modified motor. It was hurt. <laughs> <and I had, laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh goodness. Well, Jared, we certainly appreciate having you here on In the Dirt, and hopefully we can call on you in the future after uh, several more victories this year. How about it? Well, I sure hope you're going to win over a victory, so I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk on the radio. All right, well, thank your sponsors real quick, and we'll get you out of here. Well, i got to thank Crawford Supply, Clots, Synthetic Lube, Lubricants and uh, Fuels, and got Tomatic Gaskets, um, Rouse Shakes Power. i got uh, Clint Boyer Racing and uh, Mark Martin Automotive. And Jared Land. Barry Wright race cars. And Barry Wright race cars. Well, Jared, certainly appreciate it, and uh, we'll let you go, and uh, we'll uh, check in with you later on down the road. All right, I appreciate it. <laughs> Mr. Jared Landers, be right back. Welcome back, race fans, to the final segment of In the Dirt. Kyle May and Hollywood. Yo. What up? That was a pretty good show, boys. Yeah. Yeah, we had some good guests. Yeah. Webb was cutting me off. You messed up my momentum. I'm sorry, but the echo, I was so... I don't know if it's coming across over there, folks, but I I felt so bad over the echo. I hope the guys calling in, Don and uh, Mr. Jerry Landers and uh, Chad, the role model Stapleton, I uh, hope they weren't having... But it's just been a terrible evening as far as on my end of hearing things. But the uh, I felt like the guests did a good job. Oh, yeah. So, what, you think I was coming? I, I just seen those posts on 4M, dude. I had to ask him the question. Not not a problem. Don't even worry about it. I just don't like surprising him. Oh, that... He, shoot. He Didn't he surprise us? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like dude, he, he's, that, he's a good guy. He's a good dude. That's one of my favorite guys. I mean, I told you that last year at the banquet. Yeah. I was like, I really like this guy just because of his personality. And he's a... Uh, He's one of those guys that's just like, uh, hey, I'm a racer, dude. What's going on? And not, not there's some out there that are uh, buckets of you know what. Dude, I've never, I've never been to a race with Jared Landers and seen his ego or anything come out. He's always been the coolest guy ever. He's very, very, very cool guy. Yeah. Don's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Don, Don the same way. Same, same way with all with with Don too. But the king of cool. It's Chad Stapleton. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? You laugh. You laugh like I said, Michael Rigsby. 
No, Chad's pretty cool too. I gotta, I gotta admit, he he's not a bad guy. It's just he puts himself in some in positions sometimes. But hey, <laughs> like I said, it was all for fun. And, but you know and what? I'm all for having fun. You, but here's, but here's the here's the thing that here's the thing that annoys me. That the same people that lambasted him or whatever whatever that word is, if lambasted is not a word, the hell with it. But they criticized uh, Stapleton. Are the same ones that talk about how sanitized Jeff Gordon is. Yeah, that's true. I, so what I, the hell do they want? Well, they don't want anything. They just want to talk. Bitch. That's they it. just want a bitch. Yeah, that, that's all. That, that's all there is to it. And and see now, Chad's starting to see a little bit of, you know, what I had to, what I had to read on here about you know. And a lot of people say, "Oh, nobody reads that 4M stuff." I got to, I got to think that maybe more, more people than not know what it is and go on there and look around a little bit. And don't get me wrong, anybody listening that says, "Oh goodness, Web Dillard's is uh, condoning it," I'm not condoning it. But you sometimes mass the mass public, like Brian just said, don't know what they want. And if you're worried about your child hearing something that Chad Stapleton says, know what the hell your kid's doing. Yeah, don't just say, hey, here, go get on the Internet and yeah. look at all the porn you want. And yeah. Watch Chad Stapleton, too, by the way. And There's porn blocks. There's child blocks. There's this and that and the other. And the people who said anything probably don't even have kids. Yeah, that's probably you're probably right. I'm, I'm going to say, go on the on the record and say, yeah, they don't have no kids. But and, I, and here, here's the thing: I'm not saying that it's right. I agree with you when when you say when you reach a certain certain level of uh, just being known. Let's not not add anything to the mix. I just, just hope that Chad doesn't change everything that he does just because no. of these posts that people put on there. He should and not. because he wants to go on the Lucas tour. Because I got a, I got a feeling maybe some of those guys might say, "Hey, Chad, maybe you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that." Because I think more people should do interviews on the DRC. If the truth be told, he just probably needs to find different words to run. <laughs> Besides cracking Chad. Besides. <laughs> Because that you know the only the only people that really cover that I see that do do a decent job is dirt on dirt. Now, they do a good job, but they cover the same people, and it's all the time the same people. At least the DRC goes and gets videos and interviews, and you know Mike Myers and heck, they'll probably interview Timmy Carpenter next week. I mean, you, you never know who you're going to get on there. Well, let's so. face it, you need to have the dirt on dirt, and you need to have the DRC. You right. Can't have, you, you can't have need, one. Or, you do need that, but what I'm saying is, is that on on the DRC is probably the only place you're going to get to see Chad Stapleton act that way. Where does, I mean, where, it would be where, it'd be hilarious to get on there and and uh, okay, here here here's an example. Earl Pearson Jr. Webb. Now you've met him. You you yeah. know you know what kind of, what kind of guy he is. And a lot of guys that are around around the racetracks know what kind of guy he is. But if you ever went on Dirt on Dirt and listened to an interview or seen something about Earl Pearson Jr., you know right then and there that that's just not him being him. I, I've never because I, that I can, dude I, is hilarious. I can yes, I can I can admit to you though that I've never spoken to him that it wasn't a professional uh, conversation. So I don't I've not been privileged enough to uh, see his uh, uh, comedic side. You need to come to the North South One Hundred. I'll. If Michael Rigsby's listening, you need to assign me that race. Because that, that was a good time. <laughs> but where does the end of dirt fit in between the uh, dirt on dirt and DRC? Are we just? Uh, I'm just saying. I want to hear more. I want to hear from more people than just you know. Well, we put we Josh put, Richards. You know who you need to get? Josh McGuire. I like to get that dude. Yeah. I met him. I met him at Portsmouth, and he's real cool. Real cool guy. That, that's what I'm talking about. Why isn't Josh McGuire on there? Uh, he should be. Oh well, he was. I I talked to him. Um, matter of fact, I made made sure. If you go back to the uh, Portsmouth Lucas race last year, I did first, second, and third for Dirt on Dirt, and then I interviewed the uh, hometown guy. Or uh, what about uh, what about Tim Rivers? Tim Rivers is a hilarious dude. Nobody knows who he is either. Well, schedule him. Get him. Yeah. This is your show. This is your show too. I don't yeah. know who else do we need to get on here. I wish people would start uh, start 
start sending Call me us. some recommendations. I mean, who they want to hear from? Anybody. Yeah. This is a racing show. I mean, we I get these other guys because I'm that's who we get these other guys. That's because who we're around. Well, well, you know, maybe next week what I'll do is I'll find a handful of local guys. We'll just have them all on. Well, I know I know for sure I have one guest next week already scheduled, and it's uh, Matt Dooley, uh-huh. the uh, 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 late model pilot. He's He drives crates, limited. I mean, he can drive a duck to water. He's, he's, he's sure enough driver, but he's a young driver out of Georgia. Kyle, you know Matt Dooley, don't you? I've heard the name. What number is he? Uh, uh that's... That's so, you make me look real stupid right now. Well, here we'll put question. we'll put this out. That's how everybody, that's everybody how. that's listening needs to go to the Facebook in the dirt. Yeah. And, and send us who do you want to hear from? Send, let's see. We'll just pick a, a handful out of a hat, depending on who all we get. Because we schedule, we can schedule whoever. I mean, whoever yeah. we want to. But if there's somebody you guys want to know more about, just go to in the dirt on Facebook. Facebook backslash in the dirt. Just start throwing up names. And we'll give them a call. And say, what's going on? On the air. Heck, we might just start dialing phone numbers. Uh Uh-oh. I figured that part out, dude. I can call people now. That's number one. I wish I could figure it out on my end. There's this little thing up here in the corner. It's got a little phone. You click on it. See that? Oh, look. Uh-huh. Yeah, now you got it. I was yep. just messing around hitting buttons. I said, oh, shoot, this says call somebody. I think that my wife's probably right then. Yeah. Hey, you want to try it again? You Just yeah. just for the just for the heck of it, let's just, just call. Let's, let's no, just no, call. Surprise, no surprise guest. Uh, what? No, just call. It's going to be a surprise to everybody. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just going to dial. I, I I picked a number that's right here. This was the last person that sent me a text message. Okay, do that. H- how's that? Okay. And then we'll let see. me talk to him. Let okay, me talk to we'll him. We'll see who we get. It's calling right now. So this is the first ever in the dirt prank, I guess. It's calling. Prank. Here we go. It's like it the jerky voice. <laughs> Hilarious song. What? Hello. Hello. Oh, he's not even. He hung up, dude. <laughs> Who was it? Huh? That was that was Matt Morell. <laughs> Why did he hang up? <laughs> hey, I got a local racer here. You want to call him? Sure. We got. Here, we got, we'll call him too. We got twenty-two here, minutes. Tw- we got twenty-two minutes to mess around with this. So here yeah. we go. Um, this is a five-one-three. Let's see. I shouldn't give the number, should I? No, you should not. This Dustin dude's a riot. A good. Somebody suggested in the chat room, Dustin Jarrett. Yeah. That's a good one. We should get him. Yeah, prank him, dude. No, not prank him. Yeah. No. We'll say prank for the last thing. Isn't it? I thought they were on the phone. He's not going to answer. Hey, this is Tim. Leave a message off the beat. Was that Timmy Carpenter? Leave him a okay. message, Webb. Hey, everybody, this is Webb Diller with In the Dirt. We're leaving a message on your message machine. Maybe you'll pick up next time. Click. Click. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. right. Not a good segment, dude. No, that wasn't at all. Random so calls to the uh, unknown. No, we can't do that. Webb, are you, uh, you going to Greenville next week or what? Yes. Next week, uh, well, actually, I'll be... Let me turn this back off. Hang on a second. Actually, we go uh, to Greenville for the uh, Neesmith Crate Late Model Rumble on the Gumbo, third annual, and uh, looking forward to it. I might even give me some of that gumbo and bring it home in a jar, just so I can say I got it. Like dude, to this, my, go ahead. dude, this guy will answer. I'm telling you. I know he will because he won't recognize the number. Okay, okay. okay. I guarantee you. All right.
This will be a good one. You talk, Zane. No, you. Okay. He'll know my voice right off the bat. Okay. We just be real quiet. <laughs> we just lowered. Hey, we Hello? got some. Hey, Hello. there's somebody. We got a caller, dude. A caller. Go ahead, caller. What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Ethel, and I'm calling from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ethel. I'm 69 years old. And I wanted to say I love your show. Thank you very much. And I was wondering if you have ever had old pussy like mine. Would you like to rub my cunt? And that is not cunt. Uh, yeah, oh, my God. That's when you get dumb. <laughs> I hey, I've got, a, I've got a question, Webb. This comes uh, from a uh, caller. Oh my. Uh, okay. okay. Who, who just, you know, <laughs> just sent this over the, over the airwaves. It says, uh, "Ask Webb when Indiana plays." That would be for Mr. Jeff Alsip. <laughs> and I, I told him that if I had to hear more about that, I will find his race car. But <laughs> congratulations to the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Um. Their hardest game in the tournament was against my beloved Hoosiers. Uh, I, uh, gosh, this next part's hard to say. Uh, good luck, good, good luck to you tonight. Uh, hope it's a good game tonight. Kentucky's going to dominate, dude. Well, I'm, I'm, I haven't even watched anything. I can tell you, they're going to dominate it. Probably so. Hey, here, here's my here's my prediction uh, for game score will be uh, seventy three to fifty five blowout. I I think it's going to be like a combined score of a hundred and seventy something, but I think UK will come out on top. But the good thing is it, is uh, there's always that possibility with John Calipari, Calipari, whatever his name is, that the uh, game will be expunged later in the future. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying there's always a possibility because it's happened before. But go UK. All right. I'm going to end the show. Ethel from Texas. Uh, whoa. Thanks for being a listener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Just leave it at that. I did. I, I really had to quit listening because I, th- I didn't know what it was. And before I realized what she had said, I was in, <laughs> I, I was in so much horror. <laughs> no, we're not answering that. It is not happening. I'm not answering that. You just forget it. Well, I'd like to thank all my guests tonight, uh, Mr. Chad Stapleton, for being the man that he is and uh, not changing anything. Uh, Don O'Neill, now the uh, Master Built Camp, good victory there in Jackson, and Jared Landers of Clint Boy Racing takes home a victory at Lone Star Speedway. I don't know who this is. Oh my gosh, we got a caller. Let's take it. All right, you caller. You guys should get Dustin Linville. Dustin Linville. Yeah. Dustin. All right. Jared Sanders. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a note. Dustin Linville. So we'll get we'll I'll message him with. All right, and also and we'll, when you when you call in the show, turn your radio down. We don't we'll, or your radio, your computer. We can't hear. We don't like hearing ourselves back again. We already got an echo. Yeah, it's like a triple echo. Yeah, a triple echo. We're trying well, to figure right. out if that was him talking or somebody else talking. But we appreciate the uh, the request for Mr. Linville. And we're out of here, guys. <laughs>